What? What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's that time of the day, that time of the week, that time of the month. Once again, you are listening to The Good, The Band, The Ugly, I'm Big Papa. I'm Jeff. We've got a good one for you today. Slide this music out. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Jeff, you know you're excited, as excited I as I am. Today, folks, we have got for you... The one and only Ross Friedman, known as Ross the Boss, Ross the Boss yes. Friedman, Ross Friedman, just the boss, whatever we want to, whatever he calls himself. Whatever, yeah. But I've known him my whole, Jesus, my whole musical right. prowess is Ross the Boss. So he will be joining us any second now when he pops his camera on, and this is going to be a great time. So yeah. I know I'm psyched. Looking, looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. There, there he is. is. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ross the Boss. Do you do you oh. still like hearing Ross the boss or is it Mr. Friedman, uh, Mr. Ross? I never liked that. I never liked that as a name for my name. Really? To be honest with you, yeah. No. It's just it's just something that kind of stuck. It was like when the dictators we had our first record, and um, I mean we're all Jewish kids from the Bronx, right? And it's like Ross Friedman and Richard Blum and Scott, you know, yeah, yeah. Scott Kelly. <laughs> you know, that sounded really fucked. I said we got to. We got to up the up the ante a little bit here, so you know, we came up with like top ten, Ross the boss, you know, it's really snarky names. <laughs> it's it, it not, so you know. Well, you know, it's funny because it I, I have a, I have a nickname. Uh, my friends call call me Big Papa, which I freaking hate it because years <laughs> ago, a buddy of mine and I promoted something for um, what's her name. Um, who was the little the, the girl that hung out that was dating uh, Biggie Smalls forever? I don't that know was her name. Little Kim. Oh, she the little rapper. She was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we promoted a meet and greet for her and something after her show, and she came up and she goes, "I'm going to call you my white Biggie." From that day on, my buddies all, "Hey, you're Big Papa," and that it stuck. Oh, nice. But I hate it, you know. It's, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so I hear you. I hear you having one of those nicknames. I mean, that, you know, it's. It's all right, you know. I just something that stuck stuck with me, and you know. So, I, well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the dictators because, you know, when I was growing up a metalhead, um, I only knew of you from the Man of War days because that's who. I mean, we were diehard Man of War fans, right? Um, to the point where I just told Jeff. The first time I saw you guys, I was underage. I couldn't get into the club. You guys played here in Syracuse at a bar. And uh, Lost Horizons? No, no, no. no this no. is even before this. This is when, yeah, the fucking <laughs> oh, the pole. Other place. Oh, right. uh, I remember USA that. Sam's. And it was, was an like ice. 84. Yeah, it was an ice storm out. And we walked. There's, a, there's an ice storm every day. Though. Yeah, right. My band and I walked four miles because we couldn't even get the car out of the driveway. We walked four oh, miles in this ice storm. Knowing we were all pretty much under underage, uh, to come just to see if we could get in for sound check because a friend of mine right. owned it, and you guys were so gracious. You're like, yeah, just hang out over there. And I got yeah, yeah. talking to Scott Columbus back then. He was a lefty. I'm a lefty. I used to be a drummer. So we right. just it was just like the greatest moment of our of our beginning rock career lives, you know. And then as I grew older. A good friend of mine was really friends with a lot of a lot of the. He's came. He's out of New York City, so he right. grew up following you guys when you were straight out of the shoot. So he's like, "Oh, are you kidding me? The freaking dictators, man! They're like the four. They're like the the founding fathers of what punk rock and any of that other stuff came out. Yeah. Like That's Blondie true. and everything. You guys were before any of them. So a year a year, a year ahead of the Ramones." Oh, there album. you go. Okay. There you go. That because you came out what seventy three, seventy five. Seventy five. Okay. All right. So and their first record came out in seventy six. So again, oh, there you go. They were children compared to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and I'm glad to see you guys are back and and taking it on the road and just putting it back together. I think that's awesome. Oh, I, I got to be honest with you. The, the the reformation of the dictators. Well, I mean, after we had that dictators NYC thing, and we did like. Went to Europe like uh, eighty times, and then we we did we did really well with it, and then then uh, 
the whole thing kind of broke up. And then I told Andy, you know, we hadn't worked with us. Let's, Andy, let's get the band back together. <laughs> and, and we did a song. We wrote a song about it. We do it live. And then we tell the story. And um, so we got uh, Albert Bouchard from BOC on mm-hmm. drums. And then unfortunately, our, our uh, other guitar player, Scott Kempner, uh, uh, came down with a dementia, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, so he, Scott was out of the picture. And so we had to get a new guitar player, hopefully singer, kind of a fellow, because Manitoba was not in the band anymore. Right. So we put our heads together and we came up with Keith Roth. That's who, awesome. As you know, he's a very, very popular radio DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The serious radio. Yeah. Right. And uh, he's just he's just worked out so well. He's worked out so well for us and he's so great. And uh, with not only that, we got signed to Decca Records for our new record release. We got signed to Valley Entertainment and they're handling the online stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so for once, we have two labels. Two two separate labels working on us. That's awesome. And uh, the the first the first single was released. Uh, Crazy Horses was released a couple of weeks ago. Love it. And it's doing very well. And the next one is going to be released on September fifteenth. Okay. And Ten. so we're really 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 happy with it. So that's awesome. September fifteenth. We got to make sure to to jot yeah, that down. Yeah. There. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um. So we were talking about two out al- two uh, record labels are looking at you right or are helping you. Right no, now. they signed us. Yeah, we, so you signed, signed. us. That's great. So yeah, so um, it's it's a really uh, cool setup. Um, things have really happened. We did a we did a California run with the Damned, uh, five shows out in California, opening for what I like the special guests, you know. Yeah, and uh, we're thinking they're thinking of doing like thirty shows. 30 East Coast shows, Dick Tatum's Dam. Nice. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but we're, we're kind of hoping it does. I mean, uh, but we're going to go to Spain in uh, second week, second week of uh, September for 11 shows. That's awesome. I see a lot of uh, a lot of bands are, are making their way back over to Europe, even more than the states. I know Mr. Big just did. Europe, then they did. Uh, they're in Asia, right? They're in Asia, yeah. yeah. Um, they are. They, I, I can't believe the crowds that they, those guys are getting. It's unbelievable. They, I, well, I never knew that they were so so popular. In, in, I, I think in, in, I, I think if one person likes you in Japan, the whole country does, and it's it's just the way it is over there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but he's there. They went to they went to Bangkok. They were in all sorts of places. Yeah, and then they're like. It's, 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 Thousands and thousands of people. I'm so great to see. I saw Billy Sheehan uh, posted 16,000 tickets sold in five hours. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's, if you guys, any, anything from the U.S. that had some some uh, footage in the years past, I think could do the same thing. You guys could probably yeah, crush think, it there. I think, uh, wow, it's, it's really tremendous. Well, Ross, the boss band, is set to go to Australia, Japan, and Korea in mm-hmm. January. End of nice. January. That's awesome. Oh, okay. Australia so, loves Americans. It loves American music. Loves us. I, yeah. It's so be our third time there. That's so. incredible. I'll tell you, when I was in England, I went to the Hammersmith Odeon only because you guys would play there as Man of War so many times that I had to see it. And then when I got there, it was just, it was like empty. And I was like, eh, okay. But I know my favorite band mean, was here. What do you mean it was empty? It was, like, like there was nobody you, there. I, I was. Hammersmith Odeon? There was like I just end yeah because it's just a it's it was just there was it was like a tourist it was a tourist me. stop you know here you oh. can come and take oh, take oh. a look yeah yeah no, well, I mean, we did very well at New Hampshire oh god yeah. yeah you guys crushed it over there in fact yeah. it was funny because anytime I when I wanted to buy any because there was no internet back then no you know when I wanted to buy any of my quote unquote man of war paraphernalia post posters stick whatever yeah uh-huh. I bought it over there. I came home with more yeah. shit from Manowar than I did from England. <laughs> my, my friends and family, like, you went to England, you brought back all Manowar stuff. I said, this is the only place I can yeah. find it. You know? So, uh, oh. so like I said, I, I mean, England, I, I just found a ton of stuff. I mean, Manowar was freaking huge over there. So, yeah. And so much, not so much anymore, but more more like uh, Eastern Europe, 
and and Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, still, and not the United States for Man of War. It's just crazy. Now, do you still do anything with them? No. No. Yeah. Well. No, sir. Well, you got too much. Other, you got too many other irons in the fire. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, because yeah. their guys, their guys are like only a skip away from us here in in Auburn. Um, right. So. Right. And, but didn't we? What's his name? Oh, Motley Crouton, the singer. What's his name's kid? Sings for that locally. Uh, Eric's kid. Eric's, Eric's kid. kid. Yes. 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 Yeah. And then he was running a bar. We played at the bar a couple of times, and he was he was the bar manager. So was yeah. he? Yeah, he's oh. a good kid. He Did is. you know that? You want to know like a a, a nice man of war, nice man of war fact? Yes. Yeah. Sure. That I was the one that gave Eric Adams his name. Oh, no really? kidding. Yeah, because of the two because kids. Because his name was his, his name was Louis Marillo. Yeah. Louis Marillo. Yes. I said that's another case. That's just a little too Italian, <laughs> too Italiano. For heavy metal, or right? I said, or, you know, I go listen. He's got his two sons, Eric and Adam. Right, right. I go. You are now Eric okay. Adams. Yep. <laughs> Voila. That's fucking hilarious. I, well, the funny part about that is, and the rest is history. Yeah. The funny part, a little side note about him. I work with a guy. He sang at his parents' wedding. Right. And they're like cousins. He would do things like that. They're, and they're, yeah. They were like cousins or something. Okay. And it was, so I work with, I work with the kid. I went to high school with a girl that was his cousin and she used to talk about it. Right, right. She'd see me write Man of War. She's like, well, he's a cousin. And at first I didn't know, and, right. but her last name's Marulo. And I was like, oh, yeah. And she told me, oh, Eric and Adams, that's his kids' names. That's how he got that right. stage name. And I said, well, that's cool. Yeah. So, and then, uh, that's right. but are yeah, you, yeah, are, I mean, that's. Are you still friendly with those guys? I didn't think so. <laughs> no. Now we've we've I'm got not, a couple I'm band not, members. Not that I'm that. not friendly on purpose with, with Eric and whoever else is in the band at the moment, but right. The one guy that I'm not friendly with is the one guy. So yeah, enough said. Yep, enough said. Yeah, but like we said, you've got so much on your plate now that who cares? Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think the dictators thing is the most exciting thing for us, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got to start recording new RTB stuff soon too, but. You know, it's like, whoa, you know, and then the label wants uh, a full CD eventually, but I'm planning on just doing like singles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Doing a couple of, you know, a bunch of singles and then I'll have a bunch of stuff to put together, you know, you know, I, I mean, I got one song recorded really great, really great song. One and all it's called. It's great. And, uh, you know, the, the very thought of me sitting down right now and writing 10 songs is like. <laughs> you know, and giving them a full CD, and it's just like, you know, who buys CDs anymore except the concerts? Right, right, yeah, right. exactly. Well, you know, it's, you know, my my question always to to anybody is, can you imagine what life could have been like had we had the internet, the digital music, the instant gratification? bypassing if you even wanted to record labels 20 years ago 30 years yeah. ago you yeah. know i mean my god we, you wonder where where would we be now type thing you know right well i mean now I, now i just fail to i can't even i can't even understand the streaming thing right you know? right and the fact that whoever's whoever owns those streaming services is making money hand over foot Yep. Yeah. Because the artists are not getting paid. I guarantee you. No. God. It's it's another version of the ASCAP and BMI uh, federal shakedown. You know. Right. <laughs> it's like the only people that made money through ASCAP or BMI were them. Nobody else seemed right. to make make shit. You know. Right. Oh. I mean, still, I'm lucky. I'm still lucky. I get my I I get my royalties. I get my money, and uh, I still get it. But I mean, fuck oh, hell, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> this this record, I, I got to notice that this record, right? Yep, it's my greatest kind of AFM kind of do my greatest hits, you know. Mm-hmm. And I got to notice it's we have it's Spotify. Congratulations, you have a million four hundred thousand streams, four hundred thousand something. And I go, it's nice. I go, where's where's the where's the money? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Where's, where's the fucking money? <laughs> right. Where you have it? a million. Congratulations, Ross. You have a million three hundred thousand nine hundred. I mean, <laughs> that and two thousand seventy-five cents gets me on the subway. It's right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's just, thank you. We've had a million two hundred thousand uh, uh, right. streams. You've got the You've got letter, it. and we got the cash. Yeah, <laughs> sons of bitches. I mean, oh. you know, you know, we got a saying: stop pissing on my back and tell me it's raining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. No, you're I exactly mean, right. It, it just doesn't stop with these fucking thieves. I know. You know, I, I'm going to say this, Ross, and I'm, but I, I'm not going to go deep into it because you're going to know why. But a lot of the stuff you, you and I think a lot alike on some of the stuff that you comment on or post. We have we have right? very similar thinking. That's all I'm going to say. Well, that's and we good. don't need to keep going. Jeff knows know what I'm what talking about. about, and anybody I know, I know knows what I'm talking about, but nobody else. <laughs> I know what that. you're talking about. So, as well. There you go. Well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's nice to see that. Uh, after the grave era of two, the grave era of two and a half years ago, this country, people are kind of like coming to their senses. Yeah, yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. the, the 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 botch job that's been done on us is just it's unbelievable. Wow. It really is unbelievable. You know, and Europe Europe is 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 the inflation in Europe is just caused by all of this. It's just unreal. Yeah. Unreal. We were playing. I was. I, I did my May tour with the Ross the Boss band. My bus thing, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we we play these places, these beautiful club, beautiful restaurant, big stages, clubs. And the, and I, the one one guy that stands out. He goes, "I have paid an additional an additional twenty five thousand euros just on 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 energy to heat my buildings." Wow! Wow! Off the top, and an extra. And, and I, I said, did you, did you get the money back through sales? No, because no one's coming out and spending it. Yeah, right. Because no one has it. Yeah. You know, and that's, that affected all the touring, that affected my tour, everyone else's tour. Yeah. The merch sales, everything else was affected by the, by the, uh, by the, by the inflation mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the stupidity of uh, one man. Yeah. So you've got uh, you you've got the Ross the Boss that's that's going to be touring a little bit, uh, band, and then obviously the Dictators. Any, any way you're making your way up this uh, upstate New York area? Uh, as of now, no. But I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dictators. I mean, if we do that East Coast thing, thirty shows, we might get close. So well, well we've got uh, just one of one of our venues here is. Uh, and one of our good sponsors, yeah, Sharky's Event Sharky's Center. Event they've Center. they've uh, had. I've been, I've been there many times. Yep. So they've got a lot of good stuff there. going on. So. Yeah, I know. I love Sharky's. One second. Yeah. Give problem. me a sec. Yep. You got it. I know you don't have to take a break on this. Okay. The balls are in there, ready to go. You know how to use the machine? It's a, it's it's short. I brought it in shorter for the young men. Yeah. <laughs> you have any problems? Call me. Uh, yeah. So Sharky's is a great place. I played there. Been there many times. Well, I'm sure Jim, yeah. when he listens to this, will be thrilled that you just yes. said yes. This. He'll probably my, have my, my 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 handler, John Pettigrass, is uh oh yeah closely as filthy nasty closely productions. As, yeah, A E A A M. Yeah, he he's ex, you know yeah. he's he's vested in them. So no, I, I love the place. Yeah, it's a great he, place. Well, he's been, he's been bringing a lot of shows uh, he up has. here lately. Uh, yeah. Pettigrass. Yeah. yeah, he's handling Bill. Yeah, Ali. So we'll, we'll, we'll see oh, what okay. happens. I mean, you know, I'm thinking that. Uh, we get the dictator's record done on this week. I got leads, overdubs, and we're almost there. We're going to start sending these songs to for mixing. Uh, the guy that mixes our stuff, his, his name is Ed Stasium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if you know who we, anything about music, you will know that he's a very famous producer. He's produced uh, Ramones, Cheap Trick, yep. um, Smithereens. Mm -hmm. He's got a, z a zillion bands. That he's uh, if you if you Google that station you'll you'll, you'll you'll see, and he's he's doing all our mixing. Was it the, man and, uh, the maniacs? Did he do the mani that? Did he do the maniacs back in the day? I don't know. I don't know. He's got a lot of. I, I know he's got a lot of uh, credit. Mm -hmm. A lot of credits. So. Yeah. He's a great guy. Got a good team. 
two two great labels and uh, a great band, great live band. That's it. Sure, anything you want. Yeah, I'll tell so you. We have a, we, we've there. There are so many people in this area you don't even realize that I think would just would love to see your presence uh, up here. I've had a lot of people that have been you yeah. know, really excited to know that you were going to be on the show. Yep. Um, I have a, oh, a, that's great. a friend of, of the show who is actually in broadcasting and he's been trying to get uh, through to your people to interview on, on the, one of the local radio stations for decades now. And he's like, I can never, I got close, but I never got him. And I was like, uh, you're not well, reaching I'm out here. to the right people. <laughs> right. <laughs> really not talking to the people, you know. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, it's, it's great. I've I been playing a long time in this business, and my thing is just do the best do the best you can. Play. It's like your last show. Mm-hmm. You will never give, you know. And I believe that. It could be my last show. You never know. Right. Because right. You, you, never, you, you might not wake up tomorrow morning. That's right. Know? Sure, yeah. Yeah, in doesn't... the world, any of us, you know. That's right. So I, you know, I I I, I hear some bands that like, oh, we went to see them, but there was uh, only uh, two hundred people there. They weren't into it, so they really didn't play good. I said, "What is that about?" Yeah, yeah. You know, and you hear that more than you think. I mean, I I hear it a lot, <laughs> especially on tour. And it's like, so who the hell would do anything, something like that, and right. expect when you come back again, there's going to be more people because you suck, right? Yeah. Well, you we suck. You suck. We we always our our theory when when we played ourselves. Jeff and I've been in ba- the band for ten years now, and we didn't care if there was two hundred people there or if there was twenty people there. Right. Five, right. Five, five, two thousand. Give it. You know? I'm still gonna give it my all. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm, right. And I'm still gonna screw up. Like. like That's right. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, and then and then get the angry dad look from the stage left because now I went from drumming to singing, so now I really get yelled at if I fuck something up so i remember i remember the dictators were on tour it was we were in colorado something and it was snowing it was a fucked up night right mm-hmm. and three of the pe- couple of the people that were there one of them was eric amble who became a guitar player from joan jett and the black Arts. right yeah and he became uh and he worked with my with scott kemner for the, the dell lords and i said I go. You think I'm going? You think I'm going to suck? This kid, you know. Every you know. Once I got to know him, you know, it was amazing. It was just you can't. You never know. Uh, it, it just right. Yeah, you, you could play for that one person. Have, I would do it. I, I would yep. do it. I play my heart out for one person. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter to me, because indeed, because I'm if I'm blessed enough to be playing, blessed enough to have a guitar in my hand, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's all I care about. That's, right. You know, that's all I ever did care about. <laughs> did you find it moving from the see? Because you guys kind of paved the way, so there was really no who did you emulate um, with the dictators. So you paved the way there, but then you went hard right to the Man of War thing, and and those two iconoclastic kind well, of groups did. Well, there was a band. There yeah. was a band in between the dictators and Man of War. There was Shaking Street. Okay. So that was a little more, that was more hard rock E, you know. So, you know, at the end of the three records after Blood Brothers, we decided to take a, uh, a kind of a break, you know, you know, think about it for a while. And uh, Sandy Perlman, our manager, who was also the Blue Oyster Cult manager, yeah, right, uh, discovered Shaking Street in Paris because they're French. And right. Fabienne went to, you know, seduced them and went to see him. You know, and she was hard. <laughs> very, she was so beautiful, very hard to to say no to that woman. You know, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I get a call. I get a call from Sandy. Go. Uh, uh, it was Sandy. It was like Sandy. What's up, buddy? I go. I'm in Paris. They want you. Oh. I mean, who's they? <laughs> who's they, Sandy? He goes. I found this band called Shaking Street in Paris. They have a record contract with CBS. Who else to call CBS? And Mr. Mr. CBS with Sandy Perlman. Um, they want you. I go there. Their guitar players sold this guitar for heroin. And, uh, <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> he's, he's out of the he's out of the he's out of the lineup. Oh so the God. next day, he goes. There's a ticket waiting for you. Uh, blah 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 blah. You know. Yeah. I went to Kennedy. The next day, I was in flew to Paris, and then they picked me up. Go to the uh, go to the uh, 
rehearsal room, University of Paris. My Eric had a Eric had a rehearsal space there. It was, I played, I don't know, twenty five seconds. We started. I, I started playing. Nah, 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 nah. They stopped. I go, oh, you hate me. <laughs> <laughs> they hate me. They go, oh, we want you. It, was a, it took me thirty five seconds, twenty five seconds to convince them I, I should be in the industry. <laughs> street. So uh, seriously, that, you know. So yeah. So then uh, I joined the band, and then we go to. We make the record in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, great town. That was great back there. Not now. No, no. Now San Francisco is totally no. ruined. Yeah. Totally ruined. They've totally destroyed San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And you know who did it. And um, totally destroyed San Francisco. But San Francisco was beautiful back then. Right. It was a great place to live. We had a house. Oh, it was so much fun. Uh, rock and roll was so great. And uh, so we finished the record, put the record out, start touring France, blah, blah, blah. Then we did the Black and Blue tour in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blue Oyster Cold Black Sabbath. Right. And having doing going crazy, doing good. Then we find ourselves in England opening up for Black Sabbath. Okay. Nice. This, I know their, where this is going. New, with their new singer, Ronnie Dio. Right. Yep. So I'm standing there in Newcastle, right, where I'm doing my sound check. And I noticed that Ronnie is standing on the side of the stage. I'm like, wow. I said, better be good. <laughs> 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 and so uh, after the sound check, he comes up to me. I mean, he comes up to me. He goes, I really love you and the dictators. I love New York rock. I love CBGB, blah, blah, blah. You know, you've been the sweetest person ever, ever, ever yes. put on the planet, Ronnie Dio. Yeah. And um, he goes, I, I have a guy. I have a guy on my crew who's just coming along with the crew. His name is Joey. He plays bass. I go, yeah, okay. He goes, you should seek him out. You should like go to meet him. He, he plays bass like no one else has. I've never seen him play bass. And uh, it was Ronnie Dio that made the pairing of me and Joey mm-hmm. to start yep. a band that would later be called Manowar. Right. So, you know, I, I came up, we came, we made a plan. We used to jam in black, uh, their, their dressing rooms and make a racket on their, their warm up equipment, you know, and right. they gave us their permission. You know, they were great. Geezer and Tony were amazing. And, uh, it was like the last show that I would play with Shaker Street was going to be at Hawaii at Aloha stadium. And we, na- I, I, I we, we told everybody that I was going, I was leaving the band. We named a, we had a friend that was going to, uh, sub for me, you know, and that was all agreed to. I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, you know, mm-hmm. especially Sandy's, you know, and uh, was any problems. So we did. We, we had a plan. We came off the road, started writing some songs. I had a, uh, my wife at the time, my first wife at the time, had her friend who was her boyfriend was the head of A&R at, at, at EMI, Music in New York City. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. His name was Bob Curry, and so I got a, you know, I had a had to impress him. So I said, "Shake the Street was playing at the Boardwalk in Asbury Park, and invited Curry down, and Gene and everyone came, and Curry was blown away, <laughs> fucking blown away, you know." And he comes up to me and goes, "You know something? One day I'm going to do a project with you, Russ. I'm going to do a project with you." I go, "Yeah, okay." Little did he know what that project was going to be. Right. And uh, so a couple of months went, and I, I said, can I get a demo budget? So Joey and, then Joey and I started writing songs, and the whole thing happened. And, you know, the time frame was, uh, I'm explaining it a little bit, but I got Curry's interest. I mm-hmm. got the demo budget. We made went and do the, did a demo budget. We did a demo, and the drummer, the drummer on the first dem- uh, Man of War demo was a, local fellow his name was Carl Kennedy mm-hmm. uh, the drummer he's in the rods yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah. You, you gotta know him right you know yeah so, Car- and he's, uh, Carl's, Carl. gonna, Carl's and he's gonna be in, on the show yeah he's the best and he's the original drummer from Man of War now see Swiss I did guy. not know that until now you didn't know it well the drumming was so so, so stupendous on that fucking demo and uh, what can I tell you uh, the demo was 
they loved the demo, they were going to sign the band. They're signing, they're signing the band. <laughs> and we still didn't have, well, did we have a singer? Yeah, we had it. We got Eric as a singer and uh, we didn't have a name. Um, the whole Eric Adams thing was, was Joey, Joey knew Eric from uh, playing in local bands. Right, right. In Auburn, yeah. you know. So we got Eric and uh, Joey, t- Eric didn't want to scream. He said, I don't, I'm not ruining my voice to this. They go, <laughs> Joey told me, if you don't scream, you're done. Right. <laughs> you're fucking done, boy, Eric, <laughs> you know, or Louis. You're done. So uh, we decided, uh, let's take the chance. And Eric Adams, the man of war, nice. the first demo, we got signed. That's awesome. That's so so Carl great. never went on tour, never, was he on the first I album? Wanted, or? We wanted him to join the band, but he refused. He stayed with the Rods forever. Yeah. He's still in the Rods. No, he, yeah. he was just here. He, he was, was here, here two here. weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. And Carl I and I talked, and uh, because Pendergast I, books him, books them as well. I know. And uh, yeah, he and I talked for a little bit, and I said, I told him that I was having you on the show, and he said, make sure you tell him I said hello. Now I know oh. the, the connection. Yeah. Great. I, I drop him. I draw, I say hello to him on our face on Crackbook all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I drop him the likes and all that stuff. I, so, I, you know what he's doing the live. He's doing the live drum and whatever show. Yeah. I mean, and they've played some great shows and they've played some not so not great, shows, great shows. But just like you said, you're gonna some shows you're gonna have a thousand people. Some you're gonna have two hundred. Right. So listen, yeah, you got to keep going. Oh, they're, like this. they're just so good. I've though. seen major, I, I've seen major headliners play to nobody. Yep, you sure. know, I it saw, happens. I saw Blue Oyster Cult here. Yeah. play it, as Lost Horizon. Fat, fat White Underbelly. Fat White Underbelly. Play soft White the, Underbelly. Yeah, yeah, Soft White. No underbelly. one knew the, no one knew the fuck they were. No, nope, nope. There was like seventeen people in the bar. And it was the best show I had. I had. Yeah. Well, I was blew, working there, just, so I just stood backstage the whole time. And they off. just blew your fucking mind. Yeah. I know. Yes. That's, that's, that's how it is. So, so throughout your career, I got to ask you: Was there was there ever? Well, we asked this to everybody. Yep. Was there ever the biggest like? I can't believe that just freaking happened. Something something just just went so wrong. And I mean, I know you've played thousands of shows, but. Something that went so wrong that no one knew it happened, and you're like, "But you knew it did." But nobody else did. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, I mean, not not that I, I mean, I had you know, I I I produced Anthrax. Did you know that? I did. Yes. yes. I produced if I produced the single that got them signed to Megaforce, to Johnny Z's label, mm-hmm. and they were playing in Dover, and. What's up? Hold on. What? You okay? I, I got it. I got to talk. You want something? Take it. All right. Um, so they're doing a show with with Johnny Z's other band called Metallica. Right. And okay, I'm you know sound great. So I'm gonna I'm Anthrax wanted me to, to mix the sound. So I was mixing the sound, and then, and then, for some reason I I put on my classical music because I didn't want to listen to to noisy metal to clear my ears, and um, and then I, I went backstage, and then I think some, James said something about classical music being shit or something, and I like that's not I think anything and he, and he thought that I I said something I didn't like him, I said <laughs> but that really. That really wasn't the case, and so I, I, I said that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? All right, hold on. I'll get you changed. Yeah, so I, I, I wish I, I wish I had a better relationship with 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 Metallica. Now you I, know because I, I I know Carl did did work on their first record. Well, did and did, I just they were going to ask me, but I I was just not around. So did Metallica open up for the rods in the beginning i guess they did i, I don't know yeah yeah, yeah it's, somebody it's, somebody yeah. was mentioning that when they were playing here they said you know metallica opened up for these guys i was like yeah Get the it's just out. like it's like all of a sudden metallica and then anthrax and then you know i have a habit of doing things like that i mean uh i got kk i got kk downing out of retirement <laughs> oh yeah and that's now right he's got, yeah and now he's got kk priest yep you know? yep and then 
my drummer that I use, Sean Elg, is in his band because Ripper, Ripper brought him in because of the cage and the three tremors kind of the thing. Mm-hmm. And um, so I guess I got KK out. So I guess you can attribute KK's priest to me. Nice. <laughs> Everything you my... touch turns to gold. Right. <laughs> yeah, except I don't get any of it. And then, <laughs> and, and then Mark, then Mark Lopes, my singer, goes gets gets a gig with Metal Church. Right. That's right. And he's still, I mean, he's still my singer, but I mean, now he's now he's got a, you know, he's singing with Metal Church. I go, what else have I done? I mean, you know, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> well, uh, jo- you know, we we see Joey uh, Belladonna a lot because obviously he's uh, from here, and um, he still plays in a. Well, I don't. He's not really doing it as much now because he's got the Journey. He's got cover the band, or whatever. band thing. But he was doing all the covers where he was singing and drumming and uh Chief Bigway. Right. Chief Bigway used to play I used to own a bar and he He's great. Oh, dude, he's incredible. But it was they'd bust his balls yeah. cuz he'd be in Germany on the bus touring and he'd call me to to set up gigs to get paid 3 or 400 dollars for the show and then the rest of the guys are in the background, "Hey, Big Pop, how much do you think you You'd pay Metallica to come. I'm like, yeah, you want to do it for the same $400? Uh, I'll have you guys out anytime. <laughs> They're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I think I think that's fantastic. If I was up there, I'd be playing with them. That's awesome. That'd yeah, be great. Well, you know, it's just about it's about the music and having fun and, and keeping it part right, of your life. Exactly right. You know, and that's why we do yeah. this podcast because yeah. Yeah. when pandemic hit, we lost all our shows, and it was like we got to do something to stay involved somehow with music. And these chats that we're having, fans of yours, fans of whoever we have on the show, they're hearing stories that they'd never get to hear on a on a normal cookie cutter bullshit interview. Tell us where you started. What was your first time you ever picked up the guitar? I mean, yeah, Yeah. some people want to hear that shit, but other people want to be standing around the water cooler. That's an interesting shit. Yeah. 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 Fanboy. Yeah. So, any, any, anyway, that's 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 my thing. I mean, I'm just, uh, you know, I keep working and keep doing my thing. I enjoy what I'm doing. Just my batting cage here is great, and uh, so. Do you get people I, to walk in and go, "Holy shit! Yeah. It's you!" All the time. Yeah, <laughs> they do, and they come here just to meet me. There you go. Oh, there you go. You know, this place has been here for 18 years, so it's. Well known in the neighborhood. That's awesome. Good deal. In the whole tri-state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, you but uh, oh. it, go ahead, Jeff. So, right. out of out of all the stuff you've done with the traveling and whatnot, who has been somebody that you've met that you're like, holy shit, I'm standing in front of that guy. Oh, or uh, like well, your own fan. Of course, when moment, you know. Of course, when I met Black Sabbath. Yep. You know, I'm like. Standing next to Tony Naomi, he's talking to me. I go, "Oh shit!" You know, and I, <laughs> I'm in Birmingham. I'm in the home of heavy metal. I mean, right. these guys are like, "This is great." Yeah, this is really great. You know, I mean, Ted Nugent. The other, I met Ted Nugent last year. Big fan. Uh, Uncle, he Uncle he opened up for. We opened up for him. Manowar opened up for Ted Nugent on our first tour, and he's. This is it. Uncle Ted. Uh, you know, those two, said, that maybe. that mixture couldn't have been two different crowds. Yeah. Well, that we didn't have a crowd at the time. We were brand new. Right. No one knew who the fuck we were. All the fuck we did was just had we had a we had a a shitload of equipment that towered over Pat Travers and Ted Nugent. I mean, it was brand spanking new out of a brand spanking new semi trailer. It was just very impressive, <laughs> and uh, we just blew the place apart. Blew the place apart. I'll never forget Ted Nugent. I'll never forget him. He goes, yeah, man. yeah, man. It's going to be a, a, a mean, green, a mean, mean, lean fight machine going to get through 1983. Go to mean, lean fight machine, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. All mean, right. Mean, lean fight machine going to get through 1983. So we got to we're gonna we're gonna ask you to leave. <laughs> I can't only they couldn't they couldn't tolerate that. Oh wow! Well, <laughs> completely different people. You're right. <laughs> I said, Ted, I, 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 I admire you greatly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Why are you being such a dick? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, then I got to ask oh, this, Dad, because oh, okay. I yeah. know the answer to mine. But oh, who ahead. of all the people you've played with, you've met, and you're not afraid to say it, who's been the just somebody you thought was going to be cool that turned out to be the biggest dick? Oh. Like to say, there's a lot of big ones out there. Yeah, but yeah. Well. The guy started that band with. <laughs> <laughs> Cha ching. <Okay>. All right. <laughs> All right. Enough said. I, I, I was my my experience was Ingve Malmstein. He was, oh, you know, I, I, you know, everybody has seems to have a uh, 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 an episode with Ingve, but all I mean. All I have heard, he's been just a swell. I mean, he's a great guy. Oh, that's all I've heard about him from people that I that I know and trust. Right. I right. mean, uh, you know. I guess. I guess. I mean, what... I think you got to get over the shtick. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. You know, once you get over the shtick, he's a he's a regular guy. Right. But yeah. It's but he show, sometimes he doesn't let business. he doesn't let you see past the show business with. Right. Three wardrobe right. changes before he even gets on stage throughout his yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I got to get my new <laughs> my new hairdo done for lunch. Right. Yeah. Because when he played yeah. here, he played the Lost Horizon at first. And then he turned around and played. Uh, they, he was opening for Triumph. And I was working for the right, radio right. station. Yes. And I'm backstage. And he's just, you know, friends of mine are trying to get his autograph. And they're like, hey, how do you play your, your chops so fast? He's like, from signing, <laughs> autog from signing autographs for idiots like you. Oh. And they were like, "Hey, uh, fuck Did you!" Say that? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Oh. My my friends, Ooh. they threw them, threw their autographs back at him. <laughs> so yeah, Ooh. yeah, not good. <laughs> I gotta say, we we want to have you back when when anything you want to promote. I don't care right. what it is. We want to have you well, on when that record, when that dictator's record comes out. I I, I just want you. I just want you. To tell me that I was right, <laughs> okay, dude. I I prom as soon as as soon as uh, your single came out, I I even sent something to you and said, hey, do you mind if I start promoting this on the on the on the the podcast and and on the on our Facebook and the uh -huh. Crackbook fans and all that? So we're gonna do whatever we can. Um, I'm gonna talk to it Jim and tell him to keep an eye out for. Did you see the video? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you sent me the link to it, and uh, right, right, right. Okay. I was like, oh, "Dude, this this good, is good right? stuff, man." I'm I'm excited to yeah. see, but just like when I saw the rods a couple weeks ago, I was like, "It's so good to have something different." Yeah, that's not it's not totally different, but it's just right. something different. That right. It's like, oh, it's refreshing to hear somebody playing music the way it should be played without all the bullshit. Yeah. Well, you know? I was really I was really gratified to to watch the damned audience embrace the dictators mm -hmm. and our audience. It was great. And it's, that's why I think we're going to do this tour. Let's hope we do this tour guys. Yeah, so, absolutely. Well, well, we'll, we'll say a little, uh, so little, your, a little prayer. Your next, your <laughs> next good. single is dropping September 15th, September 15th. What's the name of and it? And it's a, it's thank you and have a nice day. There you go. Okay. And it's unbelievable. I wrote, I wrote the music. I gotta say so, but uh, I'm not touting my own stuff. But it's great. Right. I think but everyone have... says it's great. Everyone says it's great until you listen. So you have to hear it and judge for yourself. Right. So well, you know, I say no more. We're... I've said enough already. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, last time we had somebody on, uh, he was announcing his European tour. Yeah. And then he was like, "I'm going to give you a tidbit, or I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, insider stuff." And so here's the scoop. I'm I'm starting the tour. Blah blah blah. So then we started talking about. It. He's like, "Yeah, I wasn't going to tell anybody till Friday." It was like, "Well, then why the fuck did you What's tell us right? on our show then?" Yeah, you open up your fat mouth. <laughs> your fat trap. <laughs> Shut up. Zip it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. so this show, just to let you know, we're going to spend uh, the rest of uh, this afternoon or this evening. We'll do the editing. It'll be up tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'll send you a link so that you can post it anywhere you want to post it. But. I, like I said, this has been, to me, probably one of the ones I've been waiting oh, for since day one. Yeah, yeah. we're here. Uh, yeah, I said I, I, I've been waiting for this this interview since right, we guys. started this podcast. Uh, one second. You were saying, sir? We, we play with the machine for half an hour. How yeah. much? Forty dollars. Okay. 
I don't care what it is. You go into that cage. You could you could read the times. You could break dance. Whatever you want to do. Here's your change. There you go. Thank you. Like that? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, boys. I loved the it. Cricket. They, they play cricket here, so we we do cricket and have a lot of oh, Okay. People, oh, nice. You know, trying to get by the culture. So uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, you go in there, you pay me. I don't care what you do. Use the machine. Don't use the machine. You uh, smash yourself in the head with hammers. I don't care what the fuck you do. <laughs> you want to break? You could you could break dance. You could freaking read the New York Times. And then light it on fire in my presence, and then you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. In fact, if you light it on fire, you might give them a discount. Right. Right. I'll give you, a, I'll give you some gasoline to go outside. <laughs> oh, God. This has oh, been a riot. Shit. Uh, guys, thank you. Thank you oh, so much. You, it's, it's a trip. It's it, a trip. It, it was. It, we're, we're so excited. And like I said, we, we want to have you back on right. whenever you want. Okay. Uh, but we'll stay in touch through the, the contact and the Facebook yeah. and all that shit. So. I'm really, yeah, it's, it's uh, dog days of summer now, mm-hmm. hot as shit, and I hate the hot weather. Me too. I hate the hot weather. You know, I can't do a thing with my fucking hair. It's just really bad. <laughs> well, I mean, at least you still have yours. Like, I swear I got to wear this stupid fucking do-rag because these lights make me look even balder than I am. <laughs> I mean, really, I got it. It really came, I mean, it, it, it kind of, I, I had a little problem with it in the, uh, during the scandemic for some strange reason. I, I and, and, and I looked like I was losing it, and then all, all of a sudden it just came back. Like wow, it came back scary good. So yeah, not not me. Good deal. Yeah, so, yeah. So one more reason no. I've got I envy you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Ross, thank you. Bro. We know you, we know you're busy, but no, no. Listen, you know I can tell you one thing. Okay. Do you wake up every morning and feel good? Yes. Not every morning. That's all. Well, do you wake up? I do. You wake up. That's 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 the, the good. Floor. Yes, that's all that matters. That's right. That's right. Yep. Well, that's all that fucking matters. You wake up, you're and you have a good day. Yep. And you, you can you can change your life. You can change someone else's life. You can impact someone. You could write a great song. You could do whatever you want to do, but you have to be alive. Yep. That's right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Ross, this this day is uh has has been one at the top of the priorities and and you made it you made it a great one. So thank you so okay. much. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Ross. We'll talk to you soon. Keep in contact. Thanks, man. All right. Take it easy. So awesome. Yes. So awesome. Everything okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Take it easy, man. All right. God bless. You too. Trump 24. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. What a great interview. He's still there. I know. He is. <laughs> he is. He's I love you. That's great. It's the Quest 22 of all time. He stands on the plate, Keith. And they're pitching men. Oh, and they followed him in, and, and you know we've got the protection on that. On that, too. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, that was truly awesome. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. All right. Oh, later, dude. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. All right. So what a, what go. a great show. What a great uh, interview. Something I never thought was going to happen. And it happened. And it happened. It did. He was one of the first people we, we booked yeah. on a national level. Yes. Um, but it was just his, but he his just got done and, doing his tour yeah. and stuff like that. And God, I can't. And he's got the dictators and, and the Ross Boss band and that new single coming out September yeah. 15th. Check it out. When it drops, the fact that he remembered playing at the other bar, I know that that made that yeah. made my day because here's a 15 year old kid. No, sorry, it wasn't 15. 83, a uh, 16, 16 year old kid. Yeah, walking four miles in an ice storm to go see his band, knowing we couldn't get in. Yep, they had us come in. They did their sound check. They played a couple other songs, and then they just came over and shot the shit with us. Yeah. And just 
my first taste of what a cool musician could be like. Yeah. You know? And um, that in that first meeting though, you gotta kinda think to yourself, okay, this is how I wanna base myself. Yeah. This like you know? someday if I ever made big on anything, yeah. it's just to right. be cool. Yeah. To people. Yeah. And uh just so cool. I was a thrill to have him on. So anyways. Let's start this up. Let's go. So you've been listening to The Good, The Band, The Ugly, I'm Big Papa. I'm Jeff. That was Ross Friedman. We're not going to say the middle part because he didn't like it. I know it was weird, I thought, but okay. It's all right. Tomorrow on the show, we've got Ben Morrow. Yes. He is the guitar player currently for Cher. Yep. And And others. Played with Kelly Clarkson. So many. Played with Don Felder from the Eagles. Still plays with Don Felder. Look forward to hearing some of them stories. And we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Yes. Take it easy, everybody. Peace. Peace.